Hare Krishna, dear devotees, welcome back once again to our ongoing series on the glories of our most beloved Sri Vrindavan Dham. Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prashtaya Bhutale Srimati Bhaktivedanta Swaminiti Namane Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pacharine Nivishesha Shunyavadi Pastracha Deshatarane All glories to Prabhupada. <coughs> so, we're continuing with our mini-series on the subject of stimulation for ecstatic love, and this will be um, part two. Once again, this um, series is inspired by chapter 26 of Sridhar Prabhupada's Nectar of Devotion, which has the same title, actually, <laughs> Stimulation for Ecstatic Love. These lectures, as we explained in the first lecture, part one, are uh, a study of things which help to stimulate or awaken our love for Krishna. In our last lecture, we discussed the glories of Krishna's flute, <coughs> and we didn't finish. So this will be part two, and we'll continue to speak about Krishna's favorite instrument. The Acharyas have pointed out that uh, Krishna's flute is a, they say, a unique feature that distinguishes him even from his personal expansion as Narayana, Narayan. Um, in Chaitanya Charitamrita, Madhya 23, verses 84 to 85, we hear as follows, and I'll quote, Above Narayan, Krishna has four specific transcendental qualities. Number one, his wonderful pastimes. Number two, an abundance of wonderful associates who are very dear to him, like gopis. Number three, his incredible beauty. And last but not least, number four, uh, the wonderful vibration of his flute. I was reading that um, Krishna has numerous kinds of flutes that um, he stores in a special chest at Nandagaon. The Acharyas say that the Venu flute, uh, which is made of uh, bamboo reed uh, that comes from the Yamuna shore, <coughs> has six holes, and it's the smallest of all his flutes. We touched on that flute in our last lecture. And it's described that although it's an inanimate, inanimate piece of wood, by the touch of Krishna's lips, it has been endowed with full awareness, so much so that it enjoys the privilege of being an intimate friend of Krishna. Um, the holes by which a uh, flute is played are called chidram, C-H-I-D-R-A-M. Hmm? However, Srila Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur has written that Krishna's flute appears to have no holes. Wait a minute. The holes by which a flute is played are called chidram, chidram. However, Vishwanath Chagavadi Thakur has written that Krishna's flute appears to have no holes. Nishtridam, nishtridam. So how can this be? Well, all things are resolved in Krishna consciousness. One poet writes very nicely to resolve this apparent contradiction. <coughs> Quote, it, it's deep. The essence of Sri Krishna's beauty, condensed in the form of his pleasing smile, when poured into the flute as the nectar of his lips, fills it to the brim, giving the appearance that the Venu has no holes. You know, when we read Krishna Boa, Krishna Bhagavatam, we know that much has been written about the effect or the result of hearing this unique sound vibration of, of Krishna's flute. For example, uh, I was researching and I found in uh, Chaitanya Charitamrita Madhya, uh, 24207, we hear, a uh, quote, My dear friend, when Krishna and Balaram passed through the forest, leading their cows with their cowherd boyfriends, they both carry ropes with which, at the time of milking, they bind to the rear legs of the cows. When they play on their flutes, all moving living entities are stunned, and non-moving living entities experience ecstatic jubilation 
by their sweet music. All these things are certainly very wonderful. All these things are certainly very wonderful. Now wonderful <coughs> is also the pastime of raining flutes. There's a pastime. <laughs> it's called by Acharyas, raining flutes. Well, we've heard of, you know, rain water. <laughs> Sometimes it snows or there's hail, but raining flutes? <coughs> Yes, indeed. One day, Krishna was meeting with Srimati Radharani in her rooms at Yavat. He snuck in. When suddenly, who should walk in but Jatila, uh, Radharani's mother-in-law. Seeing her, Krishna literally dove out of a window. But he left his flute behind. Now, fortunately, as we all know, Jatila is half blind, so she couldn't see exactly who it was that dove out of the window. But as she often does, she's <laughs> always thinking of Krishna, never forgetting him. She's a Rajavasi. As she often does, she assumed it was Krishna and said to Shivadika, That was Krishna, wasn't it? But Radharani denied it. Unfortunately, though, Jatila then saw. Krishna's flute lying uh, on a table. And she immediately concluded that he must have been there. She blurted out, That was Krishna, I know it. There's his flute. At last I've caught you red-handed with that rascal. <laughs> so Srimati Radharani didn't know what to say, but bold Alita, always there to protect her dear Radha, she's you know, Radharani's principal girlfriend, she stepped forward and kind of, uh, how is it described, uh, matter-of-factly uh, declared, that's not Krishna's flute. <laughs> Don't be ridiculous. So Jatila was astonished. She thought, how could Lalita deny that, um, you know, Krishna had been there when the flute was such clear evidence that he must have been? She thought like that. So, Jatila asked in a, in a scornful way, it's described, well, how did, it, how did this flute get here then? How did this flute get here? You girls don't play flutes. Only Krishna plays flutes. <laughs> so how can you deny the obvious? But Lalita was not, was not even slightly discouraged. How's it described? She folded her arms and, de and declared with complete conviction. She said, Jatila, don't you know, today it's raining flutes. Don't you know, today it's raining flutes. So Jatila said, raining flutes? That's completely crazy. How dare you say such rubbish? Then without hesitating for even a second, Lalita said, just look out the window then. Just look out the window. So Jatila went to the window, was out, mumbling about rascal girls lying and talking nonsense. And when she got to the window and looked outside, sure enough, it was raining flutes. Somebody should do a painting. Sure enough, it was raining flutes. Voila, say so. Now, it's an interesting point that although Krishna's, um, although the flute is Krishna's favorite instrument and is so very dear to him, um, from the following pastime, it appears that Sri Radha has more control over that flute than Krishna. That's not surprising because, you know, she has full control, full control over him at all times by her bhav, by, by her love. And Krishna likes it that way. One time, um, Srimati Radharani left the rasa dance. And Krishna, noticing this, he also left that particular rasa dance, looking for her. He wandered through, you know, all the kunjas around Govardhan Hill, calling out Radharani's name, until finally, uh, somewhere near uh, Jatipur, Jatipur, he found Radharani in, in a kunja, 
with Lalita and Vishaka and some other special gopis. But when Krishna came up to Radharani, she turned her face away and said to Lalita, tell that rascal boy to go away. So Krishna bowed his head down and with tears in his eyes, he, he left that place. And he went to another kunj where uh, the acharyas described he laid down and he just went to sleep. He was so upset he just <clears throat> went to sleep. So then Radha, smiling, told some of her friends to find out where Krishna went and report back to her. <clears throat> so her scouts um, eventually found Krishna laying down sleeping in this, this other kunja, this other um, forested area with his crown off and with his flute under his hand, sleeping. So when the girls came back and told this to Radharani, suddenly all the, the, uh, the go her girlfriends like Lalita, Vishaka, Rati Manjari, all of them, they got the same idea at the same time with Sri Radha. They all thought this is all, you know, Purnamasi's arrangement. She makes all these wonderful arrangements, actually very Early each morning, she meets with Vrinda Devi, her helper, and they come up with these amazingly beautiful, sweet, loving pastimes. So all these gopis, they had the same thought at the same time. They thought, no one is guarding Krishna. He's asleep. He's alone in the kunja. This is the perfect opportunity to steal his flute. So all the gopis got together and very silently they snuck into that particular kunj, that grove, where um, Krishna was, and they saw he was still asleep. A little note here. Actually, Krishna, Charya say he wasn't sleeping, he was pretending. <laughs> so the gopis started discussing how they were going to steal that flute. So Lalita, she said, this flute, this particular flute, can only be stolen by someone who is very clever, very quick, and very fast. Someone who is very clever, very quick, and very fast. And immediately, all the girls, simultaneously, they turned around and looked at Sri Radha. So Radha smiled, because here was an opportunity to what? Associate with her beloved. So she tied up her sari, you know, kind of like to look like pants or something, which would make it easier for her to, to go, not make any noise. And she, what did she do? She tied a cloth around her bangles and her ankle bells so they wouldn't make any noise. And she started, you know, moving through the kunja, moving through the grove, very um, quietly. Because, you know, when you walk, you can some twigs can crack or you can move some leaves. She's so expert. She went that, that, through that kunja without making even a little sound. And she snuck up to where Krishna was. And then uh, it's described, uh, she moved very carefully and very deliberately, one step at a time, those last few meters, just to make sure Krishna didn't wake up. And finally, when she got to where Krishna was, she very carefully reached out and grabbed his flute. Then she jumped up and ran, like the wind that's described. While all the other gopis who were watching, they just giggled and laughed. Now, of course, Shiradika and her Lalita and Vishaka and her, her gopi friends, they didn't see. But as soon as the flute was gone, a little smile came across, across Krishna's face. He was laying there again, you know, pretending to be asleep. And as soon as the flute disappeared, a smile came across his face. So after some time, Krishna got up and he came back to that first kunja where, where the gopis were. And he, you know, they didn't notice him at first. They just kind of ignored him. <clears throat> it's kind of the common thing in the pastime. They just, oh, here he is again, the son of Nanda Maharaj. <clears throat> So Krishna called out, Hey, do any of you know where my flute is? Do any of you have my flute? 
So all the gopis looked at him like, what do you mean, do we have your flute? Why would we have your flute? And Lalita says, just see, Krishna, first you offend Radharani, and now you accuse some of her friends of thievery. You are such a rascal boy. So at this point, Krishna came forward and you know, started personally searching the gopis for his flute. And they were going, don't touch me, you rascal, don't touch me. And Krishna said, I'm looking for my flute. So at this point, the girls, you know, the gopis, they started secretly handing the flute uh, to, to one another so he couldn't find it. Maybe one gopi had it, he came to check. She'd silently give it to a friend <laughs> like this. And finally, one of the gopis handed the flute to Sri Radha right in front of Krishna. <laughs> so now Krishna knew that Sri Radha had the, had the flute. So she just stood there smiling with Krishna's flute in hand. Now because she's chief of all the gopis, Krishna couldn't just go and start roughing her up looking for the flute. So to the joy of all the gopis present and to the joy of all Gaudiya Vaishnavas, past, present and future, Krishna knelt down in front of Bhadarmani, took her hand and begged her to give his flute back. In essence, this shows the power of pure, unadulterated love for Krishna. It's so powerful that love can con control the all-powerful Lord. Or let us say, Krishna allows himself to be controlled by the love of his devotees. Love reigns supreme, Sri Vrindavan Dham. And that's where our hearts should be. So this is the intimate, um, sweet love of Braj. Not to be found even in Vaikuntha, the official kingdom of God. Srila Rupa Goswami Prabhupada writes in um, Lalita Madhava 1038, uh, where the gopis are speaking. It's very sweet. Dear Krishna, the fragrance of the mellows of your pastimes is spread throughout the forests of this glorious land of Vrindavan, which is surrounded by the sweetness of the district of Mathura. In the congenial atmosphere of that wonderful land, you enjoy your pastimes with your flute dancing on your lips. And surrounded by us, the gopis, whose hearts are always enchanted by unpredictable ecstatic emotions. All right, Krishna. <laughs> this is just nectar. Vrindavan Daham. This is where we want to go. And by hearing Shravanam Kirtanam, it brings Krishna Shmaranam. And by always being in association with the Lord by transcendental sound vibration, it's guaranteed that in time our love for Krishna will awaken. And when we leave this world, we'll go to where our heart takes us. And that will be Hopefully, Sri Vrindavan Dham. So, dear devotees, I'd like to finish <coughs> today <coughs> with a verse from um, Chaitanya Charitamrita, Madhya Leela, uh, chapter 20, ver 21, verse 144, as well as um, Sridhar Prabhupada's purport, because that's the way we understand everything in Krishna consciousness. So, verse... 144 says, and I conclude, <coughs> the verse is, is first, the vibration of his flute is just like a bird that creates a nest within the ears of the gopis and always remains prominent there, not allowing any other sound to enter their ears. Indeed, the gopis could not hear anything else, nor are they able to concentrate on anything else not even to give a suitable reply. Such are the effects of the vibration of Lord Krishna's flute. And then Sridhar Prabhupada, he writes, and it's very interesting, the vibration of Krishna's flute is always prominent in the ears of the gopis. Naturally, Prabhupada writes, they cannot hear anything else. Constant remembrance of the holy sound of Krishna's flute keeps them uh, enlightened and enlivened. And they do not allow 
any other sound to enter their ears. Since their attention is fixed on Krishna's flute, they cannot divert their minds to any other subject. In other words, a devotee who has heard the sound of Krishna's flute forgets to talk or hear of any other subject. Now listen to the next thing Prabhupada said. This vibration of Krishna's flute is represented by the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. A serious devotee of the Lord who chants and hears this transcendental sound vibration becomes so accustomed to it that he cannot divert his attention to any subject matter not related to Krishna's blissful characteristics and paraphernalia. Thank you, Sridhar Prabhupada. You know, we're hearing in this class and the previous class and more classes how the flute is so powerful, it attracts the devotees, it awakens their ecstatic love. Prabhupada said, this vibration of Krishna's flute is represented by the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. The same effect will be there if we chant sincerely. Follow Prabhupada's instructions how to chant Hare Krishna. And if we distribute that chanting to the general public. This is the secret of Krishna consciousness. I'd like to thank all of you. Um, I, I left Mayapur. It was hard to leave Mayapur. Um, but I'm back in, in Vrindavan. I'm very happy to be here, at least for a few days. Um, I'm going to America in, in a few days to do some programs um, here and there. And, but I can't stay away from uh, Vrindavan too long, so I'll be back in, in three weeks. But we will continue with our lecture series um, on this, uh, what stimulates us to, to love Krishna, this different paraphernalia. And next Friday, I'll be somewhere on the east coast of America, but we will discuss uh, the mirrors, how the mirrors in Krishna's pastimes uh, stimulate us for uh, eventual ecstatic love. Thank you. Glorious to Prabhupada. See you in a week. Shishi Gorani Tai Ki, Shishi Krishna Balaram Ki, Shishi Radha Shama Sundar Ki, Brindavan Eshwari, Shimati Radharmani Ki, Mayapur Dhamma Ki, Shishi Gorani Tai Ki, Shri Krishna Sankirtan Yagya Ki, Nitai Gorbhimanandi, Jai Jai Sisi Radhe. Hey.